Russian history and its key figures. It is likely obviously that the biggest country on the planet, including Eastern Europe and Northern Asia, with its steadily evolving scenes, various time zones and different occupants, would likewise suffer a heart attack and complex history. Early Russian history starts in the late 9th century with the foundation of the Rus state and starting here on, there are numerous exciting bends in the road in the narrative of Russia. There are the early Mongol attacks, Ivan the Terrible and Tsarist systems joined by the overcoming of unfamiliar grounds and the times of illumination followed by ridiculous upsets and dangerous conflicts. Russia's set of experiences is tempestuous, sensational and brutal however for a set of experiences devotee it is likewise grasping and fascinating. While there are numerous commonly recognized names from Russia's cutting-edge history, like Rasputin, Trotsky and Gorbachev, there are some similarly convincing and critical figures in early Russian history, as Rurik of Rus, Ivan the Great and obviously, Ivan the Terrible. In this article, we will dig into early Russian history and its vital characters to acquire a more profound comprehension of the Russia we know today. A portion of these figures have formed the country of Russia significantly and both advanced and enfeebled various parts of the state. This is the primary article in a progression of articles that will investigate Russian history and its characters, from the establishment of the Rus state up until Vladimir Putin. This article is motivated by Martin Sixmuth's book Russia, A 1000-Year Chronicle of the Wild East, Penguin House 2011, just as different assets connected all through. The article goes about as a backgrounder for Odyssey Traveler's little gathering visits that movement to Russia and those intrigued by the historical backdrop of Eastern Europe. As of now, Odyssey Traveler offers five visits to Russia. The visits, normally including travel by the Trans-Siberian Rail across the huge nation, visit St. Petersburg and Moscow just as other key locales like Kursk and Lake Baikal. Voyagers will find the opportunity to see a portion of the country's fundamental vacation destinations including Peterhof Palace, Nevsky Prospect, the Moscow Kremlin and Lenin's Mausoleum. The Land of the Rus. Archaeological proof recommends that Indo-European, Ural Altaic and other different gatherings involved the region that is presently Russia since 2000 years BCE. Little is thought about this period and the establishments and exercises of the individuals who populated the region. From the 3rd century, the East Slavs arose as an intelligible gathering in this piece of Europe. The narrative of how different Slavic clans came to join under one pioneer is retold in the Russian Primary Chronicle, otherwise called Nestor's Chronicle and Kiev Chronicle. The Russian Primary Chronicle, thought to have been written in 1377, covers Russian history from the year 852 to the second decade of the 12th century and has been of crucial significance to understanding this time span, because of a few enduring releases. Novgorod, known as Veliki Novgorod, is regularly called the origin of Russia as it is viewed as the most seasoned city in the country. Preceding the 9th century Novgorod was a significant organizing post on the shipping lane that got from the Baltic Sea in the north down to the Byzantine Empire in the south. It was here that different Slavic clans lived, with every clan competing for control over the others. As per the primary chronicle, clan rose against clan, with the conflict between the gatherings rapidly strengthening to war. Be that as it may, before any annihilation followed, the clans said to each other, let us look for a sovereign who may run over use and judge us as indicated by the law. In a time frame damaged by wars and intrusions, this choice to look for an arranged settlement was genuinely surprising. The clans chose to track down an impartial pioneer from outside the locale to govern over them and went abroad to the Vikings to choose one. Supposedly, the Slavic clans discovered a gathering of Vikings called Rus, as others were called Swedes and Angles, and advised them of their rich yet tumultuous land and requested that three siblings come and rule as rulers. The oldest sibling, Rurik of Rus, found himself at Novgorod and the Russian land acquired its name. The date that Rurik showed up in Novgorod, 862 AD, is for the most part viewed as the establishing of the Russian country. Rurik of Rus. Rurik of Rus has practically legendary status in Russian history and is considered by numerous Russians to be the originator of the primary Russian administration and the genuine maker of Russia. There is some debate among antiquarians whether he truly existed or was some blend of Viking rulers who came and governed around there. 
In any case, for some Russians, Rurik, genuine or not, is a significant figure and emblematic of the progress from different, fighting clans to something that took after a country or local area. Rurik was a Varangian clan leader yet little is thought about his origin, family ancestry or early life. Some 19th century researchers speculated he may have been Rorik of Dorostad, a Danish Viking who kicked the bucket around 882 yet there isn't a lot of solid proof to affirm this. Most antiquarians concur Rorik and his supporters probably started from Scandinavia and were identified with Norse Vikings. Concurring the primary chronicle, Rurik and his siblings Sinius and Truva and their enormous entourage went to the space that is currently Russia between 860 to 862. Sinius guaranteed a region at what is presently Belarusk, close to Lake Beloye, while Trevor set up himself at Skov. Rurik's first home was purportedly in Ladoga yet he moved his seat of capacity to Novgorod. At the point when Sinius and Truva both passed on not long after building up their regions, Rurik united their property into his domain. He stayed in power until his demise, apparently 879. It is said that on his deathbed, he proclaimed Oleg his replacement and depended Oleg with his child Igor, who was still too youthful to even think about administering. During this time, the Rus acquired a standing for savagery and animosity with stories in the chronicle laying out how Rurik's men drove endeavors to Byzantine Empire, south of Rus region, killing numerous Christians and laying attack to Constantinople. Rurik's replacements would ultimately move the cash flow to Kiev, establishing the territory of Kiev and Rus. It is said that various surviving regal families are slid from Rurik however the last Rurikid who might control Russia was Vasily IV. Oleg of Novgorod. Oleg is thought to have been the brother by marriage of Rurik and concurred with Rurik's passing to deal with the two his realm and his child, Igor. During his standard, Oleg held on to control of new regions including the Dnieper urban communities. In 883 he acquired force of Kiev by apparently deceiving and executing Askod and Deer, the military men who governed the city. Oleg named Kiev the capital of Kiev and Rus, his recently made state and set to work strengthening the city and bossing military endeavors around the space to kill any likely dangers around the space. In 911, Oleg put his focus on Constantinople and requested 80,000 men in 2,000 boats to cruise down the Dnieper and assault the city. Frightened by what Oleg may do, the Greeks consented to haggle with him and offer him anything he needed as a trade-off for keeping their city. Accordingly, the Russians had the option to arrange an entirely great exchange deal with the Greeks that served to establish the frameworks of Kiev's future thriving. Russians would make a trip to Constantinople with products and captives to exchange and get back to Kiev bearing wine, dishes, gems and silks. The catch of Kiev subsequently would prompt the Kievan Russians venturing to the far corners of the planet, assembling an economy and searching out new domain to overcome. In the primary chronicle, Oleg is regularly called the Prophet. Rumors have spread far and wide suggesting that Oleg's passing was forecasted by agnostic clerics who said that Oleg's steed would cause his demise. To oppose the prediction, Oleg had the pony sent away and when he found the pony had passed on, he requested to see its remaining parts. While visiting the bones, he contacted the pony's expertise with the tip of his boot, making a snake rise out of inside the pony's skull. The snake bit Oleg and he kicked the bucket, satisfying the prediction. Vladimir the Great Vladimir the Great or Vladimir I was the Grand Prince of Kiev and the leader of Kievan Rus from 980 to 1015. He is most popular for changing the state religion to Orthodox Christianity and Christianizing the Kievan Rus. For this, he was made a holy person after his demise. Vladimir was the ill-conceived child of Prince Svetoslav of the Rurik administration. His mom was his dad's servant, Malusha Malkovna and in Norse adventures she is portrayed similar to a prophetess who lived to the age of 100 and was brought from her cavern to the castle to anticipate what's to come. While Vladimir was made Prince of Novgorod in 970, his dad's genuine child, Yaropolk, was given control of Kiev. 
After the passing of his dad in 972, Vladimir escaped to Scandinavia where he selected a Varangian armed force and afterward got back to Kiev and vanquished it, executing Yaropolk and turning out to be leader of all of Kievan Rus. By 980, he had solidified the Kievan domain from Ukraine up to the Baltic Sea. At the point when he came to control Vladimir was an agnostic, who was said to have had seven or eight spouses and partaken in worshipful rituals including human penance. At first when in power, he assembled agnostic sanctuaries and symbols around Kiev. Notwithstanding, as indicated by the primary chronicle, in 987, Vladimir sent agents out to examine the religions of adjoining countries as large numbers of the heads of these countries had been urging Vladimir to embrace their individual beliefs. The emissaries returned and revealed that of the Muslim Bulgarians of the Volga, there is no happiness among them and that the absence of liquor made it unfortunate as a religion for the Russians. It is regularly said that on this point, Vladimir commented, drinking is the delight of the multitude of Rus. We can't exist without that delight. It was Eastern Orthodox Christianity that most intrigued the emissaries who were stunned by the Byzantine Church, portraying to Vladimir the staggering magnificence of the lofty divine liturgy at Hagia Sophia. Subsequently, in 988, Vladimir looked for the hand of Emperor Basil II's sister, Anna. At no other time had a Byzantine supreme princess wedded a Slavic agnostic yet the emperor required military guide from Vladimir thus an agreement was framed. Basil II agreed to the marriage, under the condition that Vladimir become Christian. After his submersion, Vladimir took on the Christian name Basil and requested the Christian change of Kiev and Novgorod. Agnostic symbols were projected into the Dnieper stream. In their place, Christian temples were fabricated including one devoted to St. Basil and the principal stone church in Kiev, the Church of Tithes, worked in 989. During this time, the Byzantines had clerical command over the Rus church and they named a Greek diocese supervisor for Kiev. Nonetheless, the change to Christianity served to improve Rus associations with Europe and exchange with the West bloomed. Under Christian Vladimir, life in Kievan Rus appeared to improve with another accentuation on the standard of the law, instruction and help for poor people. Nonetheless, not every person was glad to be changed over to Christianity. All through the country, agnostic uprisings proceeded with numerous neighborhood populaces forcefully and savagely dismissing the new religion. Albeit these uprisings proceeded long after Vladimir's demise, Today he is recognized as a key figure, if not the key figure, of the Russian Orthodox religion and his choice to change over Kievan Rus has had unmistakable ramifications for Russia as a country. This choice additionally carried with it language, as a normalized composed language should have been made altogether for the recently changed Slavs over to have the option to peruse the Bible. This new letter set, made by Greek priests, would turn into the reason for vernacular Russian. Alexander Nevsky. Saint Alexander or Alexander Nevsky is a critical figure of archaic Rus and perceived for his military triumphs over German and Swedish intruders. He was consecrated as a holy person in 1547. During his lifetime, Nevsky filled in as Prince of Novgorod, of Kiev and of Vladimir, one of the Middle Age capitals of Russia. While the Grand Prince of Kiev was viewed as the preeminent leader of Kievan Rus, the city-states were driven by singular rulers who had their own militaries. Nevsky was the second child of Prince Yaroslav Sevolodovich and his granddad was Sevolod the Big Nest, the Grand Prince of Vladimir who carried wonder to the city. In 1236, the Novgorodians gathered Alexander to become ruler of Novgorod in the expectations he would protect their situation in the northwest from Swedish and German attacks. In 1240, at only 19, Nevsky effectively assaulted and crushed the Swedes and kept Novgorod from intrusion. The next year, the Teutonic Knights, a mobilized gathering of Prussian crusaders, looked to attack Rus and spread the Catholic confidence. The knights caught Skov however as they walked on to Novgorod, the now 20-year-old Nevsky was prepared to meet them. Rumors from far and wide suggest that, even with a developing number of Russian setbacks, Nevsky figured out how to bait the adversary powers onto the meager ice of the Lake Pipus where they went smashing through the ice into the cold waters to meet their demises. This got known as the Battle on the Ice.
This was a significant triumph as is yet seen a critical occasion of the Middle Ages. It was incredible at the time that infantry could overcome mounted knights however this was decisively what Nevsky and his officers did and hence it addressed a significant achievement for Russia. After the triumph, Nevsky demonstrated himself to be a serious government official. He sent emissaries to Norway and masterminded a ceasefire that was endorsed among Rus and Norway in 1251. Nonetheless, in the east of the country another issue was emerging. Mongol armed forces were vanquishing portions of Rus and Nevsky's dad had consented to serve the new Mongol rulers. At the point when he kicked the bucket in 1246, the seat of the Grand Prince was left empty yet it was Nevsky's more youthful sibling, Adrey or Andrew, was introduced as Grand Prince by the Great Khan. In 1252, Adrey would not promise loyalty to the new Great Khan and he was driven out of Russia. In his place, Alexander became Grand Prince. Regardless of confronting resistance from individuals, Nevsky proceeded with the strategy of helping out the Mongols and for his participation, he was permitted significant opportunity by the way he controlled and got significant concessions from the Mongol Khans. While Nevsky needed to honor the Mongols, he could basically go about as a delegate of them. Nevsky attempted to re-establish Rus thriving and when he kicked the bucket in 1263, he was extraordinarily appreciated as a pioneer. He is recollected in Russian history for his profoundly felt Christianity, his military ability and his capacity to coincide with the Mongols. Be that as it may, the attack of the Mongols saw the last leftover of Kievan power obliterated. Archaic Russia was basically isolated into four locales and the Khan of the Golden Horde would control European Russia until 1480. In 1938, the acclaimed Soviet producer Sergei Eisenstein made the film Alexander Nevsky, portraying the Battle of the Ice. The epic film was made in a politically charged setting, against the background of the ascent of Nazi Germany, and the film is noted for its Stalinist promulgation. Nonetheless, the battle on the ice scene keeps on being perhaps the most celebrated general media tests in film history. The two and a half hundreds of years of Mongol guideline would have a sensational impact on Russia. Numerous antiquarians contend that it was this time of Russia's set of experiences that kept Russia from creating as a Western state and adequately isolated Russia from the West. Just as this, being confined from Europe implied that Russia passed up the Renaissance and, as per the political logician Pyotr Chardayev, neglected to gain the general upsides of obligation, equity and law and order. The tradition of the Mongol time frame is that, instead of forming into a majority rule government, Russia was changed into a tough totalitarianism and metro interest and regard for the law was supplanted by legal torment and unfeeling tyrants. Ivan the Great Ivan III or Ivan the Great was a Grand Prince of Moscow and Grand Prince, all things considered. He is a recognized as significantly increasing the area of Russia, acquiring freedom from the Mongols, Tatars and establishing the frameworks for the Russian state. He filled in as ruler for a very long time and was simply the primary Russian ruler to style as, Tsar, despite the fact that it was not his authority title. Ivan was brought into the world at the tallness of a common conflict between allies of his dad, Grand Prince Vasily II of Muscovy, Moscow, and allies of his insubordinate uncles. In 1446, when Ivan was six years of age, his dad was caught and dazed by his uncle and his children. Ivan was misleadingly given over to his dad's captors yet his dad recaptured power and prepared Ivan in expressions of the human experience of war and government. Ivan was offered to the girl of the Grand Prince of Iva for political reasons when he was 12 years of age and when he was 18 he had driven fruitful military missions. At the point when his dad passed on in 1462, Ivan turned into the Grand Prince of Moscow. After five years, Ivan's youngster Lady of the Hour passed on, under marginally strange conditions. After her passing, Ivan wedded Zoe Paleologus, who changed her name to Sophia after the marriage. Sophia was a Byzantine princess and the niece of the Constantine XI, the last Byzantine ruler. The marriage was concocted via Cardinal Bessarion and supported by the Pope in the desire for bringing Russia under the influence of the Vatican, an objective that at last fizzled. From Ivan's perspective, the marriage could assist with raising him as a ruler and later, he took the Byzantine twofold bird for his crest. 
Ivan's archetypes had expanded Moscow's domain from under 600 square miles to more than 15,000 square miles and under Ivan, the free duchies of various Rurikid rulers were united and single guideline was set up over them. The sovereigns became aristocrats and the previous semi-autonomous realms became regions of Moscow. Ivan spent a ton of his standard occupied with battle with Lithuania who had ventured into Russian region. A ceasefire was in the long run endorsed in 1503 in which Lithuania perceived Russian power over the Polisk and Smolensk zones. In 1480, Ivan drove a successful mission against Khan Ahmed of the Golden Horde that saw Moscow become a free sovereign and at this point don't be viewed as a vassal of the Khan. In 1490, Ivan's oldest child from his first marriage kicked the bucket of gout, leaving Ivan with the situation of who might be his beneficiary, his oldest grandson, Dmitri, or his oldest child by Sophia, Vasily. In 1497 he designated Dmitri as his beneficiary, provoking his better half Sophia to plot against her significant other. At the point when Ivan found her arrangements to defy him, he shamed both Sophia and Vasily and delegated Dmitri Grand Prince in 1498. Accordingly, Vasily revolted again and abandoned to the Lithuanians. Right now, Moscow was at battle with Lithuania thus, in 1502, he gave the title of Grand Prince to Vasily and had Dmitri, alongside his mom, detained. Ivan kicked the bucket in 1505 and it is perceived by antiquarians and scholastics today that, as a leader of Muscovy, he accomplished more to establish the frameworks of a concentrated state and fortify the authority of the ruler than some other figure. His rule denoted the start of Muscovite Russia and he set up Muscovy as an extraordinary ability to be dealt with. His political and military victories are all around archived yet notwithstanding this, very little is known about Ivan himself, as far as his character and ethics. One thing that Ivan the Great is associated with is his remodels of the Kremlin. Ivan did an aspiring structure program and supplied his city with new houses of prayer and castles. A large part of the Kremlin's present appearance comes from Ivan's plans. Ivan dispatched a large group of Italian engineers to rejuvenate his vision and made the current horizon of brilliant vaults high above red dividers. Ivan the Terrible. The primary Tsar or Emperor of Russia, got from the term Caesar, Ivan the Terrible has a scandalous standing in Russian history, for clear reasons. In any case, the first interpretation of his name, from the Russian word Grozny, is bound to have signified, considerable, or, amazing, instead of horrible as in English speakers know it. Albeit, in his later years it is said he was inclined to seeds, scenes of neurosis and mental flimsiness. He is credited with changing Russia from a middle-aged state into a domain however he additionally left behind scarcely any set-up accounts or documentation from his rule. Ivan the Terrible became Grand Prince when he was only three years more seasoned. Subsequently, a band of consultants or boyars joined around him, getting known as the Picked Council. Some say these years being encouraged, or controlled in certain records, by the boyar powers formed Ivan and would educate his conduct in later life and his disdain of the boyar class. In 1547, when he was 16, he was announced Tsar, everything being equal, setting up the Tsardom of Russia. He was the principal individual to be coronated with this title and the title set up another brought together Russian state. He additionally wedded Anastasia Romanovna in an association that attached him to the incredible Romanovna family. During the initial not many long periods of his rule, Ivan is said to have changed assessment assortment, presented self-government in rustic zones and established legal law and church change. The Russia of Ivan the Terrible was encircled by foes with Lithuania and Poland toward the west, Sweden toward the north and Muslim powers in the south. Therefore, Ivan tracked down a sole partner in England and he imparted habitually, through letters, with the Queen. A portion of his accomplishments incorporate bringing the principal print machine to Russia and building up the Moscow Print Yard in 1553, just as directing the development of St. Basil's Cathedral in Moscow. Quite possibly the most meaningful images of Russia, St. Basil's Cathedral was authorized by Ivan the Terrible to remember his triumph of Kazan, an Islamic city recently held by the Mongol realm. Just as vanquishing Kazan, Ivan IV directed two other significant regional triumphs. 
The originally was the loss of the Crimean Swarm, bringing southern grounds back under Russia's influence. The second was the extension of Russian domain through endeavors to parts of Siberia that had never been viewed as a component of Russia. In the 1560, Ivan's first spouse Anastasia passed on in a presumed harming and it is said that her demise had an emotional effect on Ivan, with harming ramifications for his psychological well-being. Ivan fell into a profound gloom, getting progressively distrustful and acting increasingly more unpredictably. He was persuaded that Anastasia had been killed by the boyars and taken steps to relinquish the seat except if he be allowed outright force. He requested that he ought to have the option to execute tricksters with no impedance. This is the thing that prompted the creation and execution of the Oprichnina, a state strategy that elaborate the mass restraint of the boyars, public executions and seizure of land and property. The Oprichnina comprised of a different region inside the boundaries of Russia where Ivan applied selective influence. Some portion of the approach additionally specified the production of the Oprichniki, an individual watchman whose loyalties lay with Ivan, as opposed to the public authority or nearby bonds. The Oprichniki were Russia's first mystery police and they had limitless forces to squash difference and enroll witnesses. For the following 20 years, Ivan led a rule of dread, requesting the executions of thousands of individuals he dreaded were plotting against him. He distanced large numbers of his previous partners and squashed any type of metro society. He developed into an unhinged and brutal figure. A story that appears to embody the horrible side of Ivan is the alleged homicide of his child by his hand. Supposedly, in 1581 Ivan beat his pregnant girl-in-law, Yelena Sheremeteva, for wearing indecent attire, causing a premature delivery. After learning of the beating perpetrated upon his significant other and unborn youngster, Ivan's subsequent child, additionally called Ivan, faced his dad. The subsequent battle finished in Ivan the Terrible striking his child in the head with a sharp staff, slaughtering him. Ivan had been prepping his child for the seat and with his demise, the seat was left to his childless child, Fyodor Ivanovich. Ivan the Terrible passed on in 1584 of an evident stroke. Under the standard of his unsuitable child, Russia would twisting into the time of the Troubles, which would in the long run lead to the foundation of the Romanov dynasty. Ivan the Terrible left behind a mind-boggling heritage, having changed Russia into the extensive state we realize today however hurting the economy, distancing partners and annihilating the boyar class. The nation was left with profound political scars after his standard and this was essential for the explanation the country was dove into disorder for just about a century thereafter. Michael I Romanov Michael of Russia, otherwise called Mikhail Romanov, was the primary ruler of the Romanov tradition, who controlled Russia for in excess of 300 years. His climb to the seat saw the finish of Russia's Season of Troubles, 1584-1613, a time of disturbance described by Manikin pioneers, conmen professing to be restored czars and common conflict among quarreling groups. Michael was chosen as czar by a public committee known as the Zemsky Sabor, Assembly of the Land. The Zemsky Sabor was a model of present-day parliament and surprisingly a few agents of the lower class had the option to have a say in who was chosen as czar. It was significant that there was expansive cultural help for the new pioneer given the many years that the nation had spent in common turmoil. Michael was picked part of the way since he was the grandnephew of the Ivan the Terrible and in this manner associated with the Rurik tradition rulers and subsequently was seen as having a connection to when Russia had been militarily solid. Michael was only 17 when he became Tsar and, from multiple points of view, he was altogether different from his extraordinary uncle Ivan. Michael was accounted for to be fragile, touchy and devout and was frequently portrayed as giving little difficulty to anybody. He depended intensely on the help of the Zemsky Sabor, who met every year all through his rule, and assumed the exhortation of his advisers. This had blended outcomes given that a portion of his advisers were straightforward and fit men and others were bad and resolved to subvert him. Under Michael, notwithstanding, Russia entered a period of thriving. Michael welcomed unfamiliar producers to Russia which assisted with boosting Russia's strategic and exchange relations with different nations. 
Numerous antiquarians acknowledge Michael for starting the Europeanization of Russia by bringing in Western advances and improving relations with other European countries. He likewise revamped the military, establishing the frameworks for the formation of the customary public military. After a short first marriage, Michael's first spouse kicked the bucket only four months after they marry, Michael wedded Eudoxia Streshneva, with whom he had ten kids. Four of his kids arrived at adulthood and apparently the marriage was a cheerful one. Michael passed on at age 49 subsequent to becoming sick in April 1645, leaving the seat to his child Alexis. Michael, with the assistance of his administration and councils, re-established request in Russia and united her domains, acquiring harmony with Sweden and Poland. Peter the Great Peter the Great, who governed the Tsardom of Russia and later the Russian Empire from 1682 to 1725, is perceived as being quite possibly the most compelling pioneers in Russian history. He is most popular for his broad changes and foundation of organizations that assisted with embellishment Russia into an incredible state. His accomplishments incorporate growing the Tsardom, working with a social unrest, secularizing schools, making a solid naval force, rearranging the military and overseeing authority over the Orthodox Church. He is by and large credited with carrying Russia into the advanced age and heightening the Europeanization interaction Michael began. Peter was the 14th offspring of Tsar Alexis by his subsequent spouse and when his dad kicked the bucket, both Peter and his debilitated relative Ivan V controlled mutually. Nonetheless, this changed in 1696 with Ivan's passing when Peter was formally announced sovereign of all Russia. Peter was known for being a monster, both actually and mentally. Remaining at 6 feet 7 in, he is portrayed in different records as being very much framed and thin yet additionally a major consumer and reveler. His affinity for intemperance was frequently disapproved of by individuals from the privileged. Peter acquired a seriously immature country portrayed by a doubt of the rest of the world and furious traditionalism. He was resolved for Russia to turn into an incredible European force and after his siblings passing he ventured out to London and Amsterdam, both looking for partners and to have the option to imitate what he saw as the complexity of the West in Russia. In 1703 he started the development of St. Petersburg, which would turn into the new capital, and it is said that the city was propelled by Peter's outing to Amsterdam. He likewise got back from his movements and cut his facial hair, in any event, venturing to such an extreme as to executing a facial hair growth charge with the goal that residents would glance more European apparently. Peter set the establishment for another Russian culture that was basically an impersonation of Western Europe. He presented works of art that had recently been illegal by the congregation, including likeness, instrumental music and theatre. When of his demise, Russians were creating popular ballet productions, shows and books. He additionally modernized the Russian letters in order, presented the Julian schedule and set up the main Russian paper. He accessed the Black Sea and procured domain in pieces of Estonia, Latvia and Finland. There is no uncertainty his reign was a defining moment in Russian history yet while Peter demonstrated himself to be a compelling pioneer, equipped for presenting far-reaching developments, he was likewise known for being pitiless and overbearing. He smothered revolts and had a large number of his first-class monitors tormented and executed when they defied him. He sent his first spouse off to live in a religious circle and requested his child to be executed. He passed on in 1725, at age 52, without having named a beneficiary. Catherine the Great Ruler of Russia for over 30 years, Catherine the Great remaining parts Russia's longest administering female pioneer. Under her rule, Russia was rejuvenated and got perceived as an incredible force of Europe. Her standard is regularly alluded to as the Golden Age of Russia and Catherine directed the time of Russian Enlightenment. She has been depicted by antiquarians as an edified tyrant. Conceived Princess Sophie of Anhalt Zerbst, the little girl of a minor Prussian ruler, she was brought to Moscow in 1744 when she was 14 to wed the one who might become Emperor Peter III. Here the congregation re-dedicated her Catherine. At that point, Russia was managed by Peter's mom, Empress Elizabeth. Catherine and her new spouse didn't have a cheerful marriage, albeit the couple brought forth one child, Paul. 
Their rough marriage implied that both Peter and Catherine started extramarital issues, starting tattle that Paul was not really fathered by the emperor. None of Catherine's three extra kids would be fathered by Peter and this additional to reports that he was barren or incapable to perfect the marriage. At the point when Empress Elizabeth kicked the bucket in January 1762, Peter III went to the seat yet he was a profoundly disliked ruler. Following a half-year in power, he was ousted in a bloodless upset coordinated by Catherine and drove by official Grigory Orlov. Catherine had the help of individuals and was broadcasted Empress on 9 July 1762. Peter III surrendered and was killed eight days after the fact. On the 22nd of September 1762 Catherine was delegated in Moscow with the Imperial Crown of Russia. The crown was planned explicitly for the Venet by the Swiss-French gem dealer Jeremy Pauzy. It is viewed as one of the principal fortunes of the Romanov line and highlights two gold and silver half circles, 75 pearls, 4,936 Indian jewels and a ruby spinel that had a place with Empress Elizabeth. It is presently shown at the Moscow Kremlin Armory Museum. During her rule, Catherine based on the tradition of Peter the Great by managing the extension of the Russian Empire and further coordinating Russia into Europe. She extended Russia's lines the two southwards and westwards, adding domains which included Crimea, Belarus and Lithuania. The British representative to Catherine's court, George McCartney, depicts her initiative. I never found in my life an individual whose port, way and conduct replied so emphatically to the thought I had shaped of her. Russia is no longer to be looked at as an inaccessible, flickering star however as an incredible planet that has obtruded itself into our framework, whose spot is yet dubious, yet whose movements should capably influence those of each and every other sphere. Especially in the early long periods of her rule, she was viewed as administering with consideration and respect, a reformist reformer who was resolved to westernize the country. She was furiously canny and a sharp peruser, who delighted in comparing with Voltaire and examining reasoning. In 1767, she gathered an all-Russian legislative commission and gave them her nakaz instruction, to make another code of law. The archive was strikingly liberal in its methodology, maintaining the balance, all things considered, and dismissing the death penalty and torment. The episode of battle against the Ottoman Empire the next year forestalled its execution yet it is regularly referred to as proof of Catherine's longing for a more grounded common society. While she started her rule as a political and social reformer, Catherine developed more moderate with age. She understood that she expected to practice more command over individuals and started to confine the privileges of serfs, regardless of whenever having named the arrangement of serfdom as unfeeling. In mainstream society, Catherine the Great is infamous for her numerous sweethearts, whom she frequently raised to elevated places and gave huge bequests. While tales proliferate about the Blue Bloods and military men she evidently had associations with, it was Grigory Potemkin who was viewed as the affection for her life. Correspondence between the pair shows their friendship for each other, Catherine composed Potemkin a letter where she said, my heart can't be content for even an hour without affection, and researchers say the issue could be portrayed as an open relationship with the couple remaining in contact until Potemkin's demise. Catherine the Great kicked the bucket of a stroke on November 17, 1796. Preceding her passing she had been endeavoring to introduce her number one grandson Alexander as beneficiary to the seat, supplanting her troublesome child Paul, however she kicked the bucket before the declaration could be made. The tale of the exceptional Catherine the Great closes our excursion through early Russian history, following the account of the Russian state from the fanciful Rurik line to the country's most renowned female pioneer. Later on articles in this arrangement we will take a gander at the decrease of the Romanov line, the ascent of insurgency and the autocracy that followed. Looking at the jobs the pioneers referenced above have played has given a feeling of how the character and personality of Russia was shaped and its convoluted relationship with Western Europe and its adjoining nations. In the event that this article has started your advantage in a little gathering visit to Russia, if it's not too much trouble, investigate the visits on proposal with Odyssey Traveler. Our visits visit legacy destinations and key attractions just as covered up pearls and lesser known spots, making for an interesting and unimaginable travel insight.
You will see firsthand the set of experiences examined in this article including finding more about Russian Tsars, Russian legends, the Iron Curtain and the times of the Soviet Union. Each visit permits you to find bright and lovely Russian urban communities and comprehend the intricacy of this excellent and strong country. Thanks for watching. Bye now. If you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a like and subscribe to Life is Often if you haven't already click the bell icon to stay updated on all our latest content.